I, uh, I want to talk today about worship and it's the subject that uh, maybe directly we didn't we didn't speak for quite some time in the church and I think uh, it's a very very important subject and I called it why worship and we're just gonna kind of lay groundwork and talk a little bit about it and as the as the days will go on we'll talk more and more about it because I believe worship is very very important aspect of a Christian life worship is a very important aspect of one's Christian's life and so um but before I start I, I came across this uh, I came across this joke and I I was dying to share with you uh, <laughs> and so this uh, there was this uh, pastor was baptizing a new believer and he was he's uh, been passionate he say now in Christ you are all uh, your old things has passed away you are a new creation and sir, therefore as I baptize you you're gonna be buried with Christ and resurrected as a new creation with Christ so uh, and his name was John he said now your name no longer being John it will be Paul and I baptize you in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit baptized me he was uh, he got back up rejoicing he goes back home and he goes uh, grabs his Budweiser and he says Budweiser I baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit into this water and from now on you no longer be at Budweiser but you're gonna be uh, orange juice. <laughs> I thought it was funny and so uh, uh, you know uh, that's uh, <laughs> don't baptize uh, your alcohol because it won't turn into <laughs> it won't turn into juice but um, uh, Got, coming back to the topic that uh, I want to cover today I want to talk about why worship why worship and maybe if you grew up in church uh, if you grew up in church to you it seems almost um, like a no doubt subject it's like well yeah we worship God because he's God and we worship him but I know there's uh, uh, there's some of us here that uh, we've we've come to the Lord recently and sometimes you know you uh, maybe even your first impression and we hear that often you come here and you think like wow these guys have a rock concert that's awesome that sounds good you know I like their music you know and then uh, you you get done through the fast songs through the jumping songs excitement songs and then you hear some songs of worship like you know uh, sloppy wet kiss and a tree and you're like well, are they saying to their girlfriend or their wife I mean who am I supposed to sing those things like like this so romantic and things like that and so you, you might find yourself in a place trying to figure out what exactly going on during the, during the worship but hopefully I can I can explain a few things and you can uh, get understanding and I think also for those of us that already have been Christian for some time and been serving God uh, it's going to be a good reminder once again to understand the act of worship what does it really mean to worship and to go deeper in it how many of you say I want to go deeper in worship come on <clears throat> if you can open with me or if you don't have anything uh, to open with you can look at the screen for John chapter 4 verse 23 your battery is low <laughs> yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth for they are the kind of worshipers that Father is seeking that's from NIV version it is the kind of worshipers that Father is seeking you know praise and worship is really universal you probably will not find any explorer that explored and came upon some culture came upon some tribe came upon some people and did not find that culture and tribe that nation worshiping some sort of a God because inside of us we have this void we have this um, mechanism built in us that looks to adore something looks to worship seeks for divinity seeks for divine entity and we are wired in such a way to give our attention, to give our adoration, to imitate and to worship somebody, something. And throughout the history, throughout different cultures, we see that people are seeking things. They make things with their own hands. They make different kinds of idols, objects. They would set aside certain places um, so they can come to worship, so they can come and worship those things. Worship is in our DNA. Worship is built within us. 
the question is now who do we worship who do we give our focus our attention who do we admire in this scripture we read if you can put the scripture back up God says Jesus says that father that we need to worship God the father in spirit and truth and he said such a worshipers he is seeking such a worshipers he is seeking see for all of the humanity in different religions and different parts of the world people are seeking to worship God people are seeking to to uh, give their adoration to somebody to something to some divinity but God says that I am seeking the worshipers you know there is a place where as Christians you know we we, we have uh, they have this common phrase and it's we say you know I'm seeking God I'm seeking God and we can do that in our prayers we can do that through our um uh, different things different uh, different activities in, in in Christianity different things in our Christian walk we can do to see God and Bible says to see God to search for him but there is one thing that you can do there's one position that you can place yourself in what you don't have to see God but God actually seeks you and it's the position it's the place of worship let's um let's look at what what worship is in Webster dictionary um, the word worship is actually a verb and it's a noun and it, uh, as a verb it includes synonyms like uh, esteem exalt uh, glorify respect as a noun it it uh, has a meaning of uh, adoration devotion supplication invocation and uh, but in actual definition uh, if you put it all together it means reverence honor and homepage paid to God ceremonial service expressing reverence so that's what worship worship really means if we look in the Bible if we look in the Bible and we see in Romans is our screen now it's not not working okay in Romans if you can write the scripture down Romans chapter 12 uh, verse 1 says this therefore I urge you brothers in the view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship I want to just kind of listen to as, as I kind of describe what and how Bible describes worship this is just kind of list of things taken from many different parts of the Bible Vols worship involves physical expression founded upon these biblical guidelines there are neither ritual or perfunctions of action or the service of emotions to one for one's uh, sake self so it means worship is not for you to feel good worship is not for you to uh, feel goosebumps worship for not is, on, is, is not for your own sake but worship is uh, physical expression of worship found in scriptures are kneeling clapping hands raising hands verbal praise singing hymns and psalms weeping laughing bearing witness aloud like saying amen reading the word aloud prostrating before the lord speaking in tongues dancing before the lord giving public testimony standing in silence and and singing a spiritual song all of those things that i described are mentioned in the bible and says in the bible that this way we can worship god with dancing with clapping with singing uh with uh singing in spiritual language singing uh, in tongues um, all of those things are acts of worship and Bible says in Romans like we read that we need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice that means we need to clap we need to dance Bible encourages us to do that all of those things this is an act of worship I want us to I want us to remember one thing as we read the scripture that God seeks such those those kind of worship them ask yourself and, and examine yourself and you'll find that you love to be around people that praise you you love to be around people that make you feel good you love to be around people that recognize you that acknowledge you you love to be around people that respect you and praise you I mean we run away from the people that complainers that constantly whine 
that put us down we don't like to be around those people and now examine yourself when every time that you come into the presence of God every time that you come to church every time that you begin your prayer what is coming out of your mouth what do you bring to God what do you say to God sometimes we complain you know and, and say that I don't feel the presence of God or you know it's been a while that I felt the touch of God the question you should ask yourself have I prepared a place for God to come have I made it comfortable for God to be around me have I prepared a room for him where he will be glad to come you know many times in my life when I begin to pray or when I when I see God in my life and um, and I find myself in a place where it's hard to pray where it's hard to see God where it seems like the heavens are shut and closed I turn to worship I turn to praise I turn my attention to God I begin to speak nice things to him I begin to adore him I begin to glorify him because I know that automatically opens his ear opens his heart to come into the place and have communion and fellowship with him because I like being around people that that like me God created me in his image and his likeness God loves when his people adore him when they worship him every time we come together as a church you have to remember that worship is not about you it's about God sometimes we come with an attitude like I don't like this song you know these guys are off key today and I tell you one thing as a worship leader and as a musician for me it's extremely difficult when things don't go the way they're supposed to go the way I think they're supposed to go for me it's extremely difficult sometimes to disconnect from the logistics of worship how it's supposed to sound or how I think it's supposed to sound and say God it's not about how I feel today it's not the fact that I'm tired in my body I had a long day it's not that I'm weighed down by all these thoughts and emotions because I had a difficult week and I got finals coming up I got these projects that are due God it's about you it's about what you like it's not how I feel it's how I want to make you feel in this moment in this presence I promise you one thing when you come with that kind of attitude you will experience the presence of God you will experience the touch of God you will leave this place different every time we get together every time you go into prayer every time you begin to address God remember it's not how you feel it's about how you're gonna make him feel in your presence it's not about what you like it's not oh worship team is just not on point today the songs they picked it's just I don't you know I don't like those songs it's not about the songs you like it's about what those songs stand for what the meaning of those songs and to take those songs and make it your own make it come from your own heart and worship the king of kings and the lord of lords amen, amen. somebody said this the true worship is a fresh is seeing afresh the tremendous worth of God and in response giving him the best that you have God is not asking you for something you don't have he's asking you for what you have and he's asking you for all of it he says I will share my glory with no one so that means he wants all of you when you come and we begin to worship on Wednesday on Sunday on Friday night or any other time that we get together when you come into God's presence God expects all of you he wants all of your emotions all of your focus and attention he doesn't want you giving him a lip service and you shopping with your head in the mall or you trying to figure out how you're gonna go about it when you leave the prayer time he wants all of you worship is an attitude and it's an action worship is an attitude of adoration and it's also an action some people say um I've talked to uh, a couple of weeks ago I talked to the per, uh, person you know they came and said you know I don't like uh that you guys ask people to and have this music I grew up in a more traditional church I don't like that um you know the fest that's fest songs you know you kind of encouraging people to dance and I kind of feel awkward so I, I like to come a little more towards the end of the worship where it's more like my style and I you know and this this person who's just genuinely asking more information so I begin to explain to him that worship is not about us it's about God I begin to bring different scriptures about praise about dancing about clapping and he left saying wow I never have seen it that way I'm gonna put it to practice and from that moment on every single time he's here before service and worshiping and 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 giving God the praise even though it's out of his comfort zone and he says you know what I'm feeling much different than I used to feel before 
because worship is never about our style worship is always about his style which is giving everything about us worship is an attitude and an action you have to have action behind it yes some people say well i worship god in my heart that's awesome that's great that's where it starts it's about the heart but god wants god wants your emotions god wants you to sing god wants you to clap he wants you to get emotionally involved you know there's i, I remember this particular moment in my life um about a year and a half ago about a year ago and um I just I remember this is a lot of things that came up at, at this at this at season of my life I was I was trying to take on this project there's a lot of money involved and and kind of the the, the things were not falling into place the the deadlines were missed and and uh the pressure of, of trying to finance that project and many other things that were going on uh, in my life at that time uh, uh, Ileana was born and there's just a lot of things going on I remember like for a few days three four days I've been trying to pray and uh, even took a day of fasting and just it just was not going anywhere my mind was just way down it was I was even having a hard time I was a little I was having a hard time sleeping uh, and even when I would sleep those three four hours in a day I would wake up restless and I would wake up tired because you know yourself sometimes sleep doesn't mean rest only God really gives us rest and I remember I just was praying here and uh, usually I would get done around nine o'clock prayer and um, I was done with prayer I was just sitting I'm like God I'm running dry I'm exhausted I'm tired I I can't find rest for my soul I can't all of these things I can't do it and I don't know where you're at I I've been trying to kind of worship you I've been trying to pray I've been trying to repent of all the sins I could think of it's just nothing's working and I felt like this still small voice said you know start praising God it's like looked around nobody was here I was like okay I guess I could do that and I went back there and turned on some fast praise songs you know break the shackles off my feet you know those all these goodies and uh, some uh, Kirk Franklin stuff and I just honestly started just just jumping up and down and going wild and praising God and right at that moment I felt like something just broke off of me that weight that 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 um, that anxiety that those worries all those things nothing changed during that time I didn't get this amazing breakthrough or anything but I was elevated out of my mess into the presence of my master I was completely freed on inside and over the time things were got worked out things got settled in its place but if I would have gonna continue to carry that load I would have been broken down and I was I, I would have quit and was not able to see things through that God had me complete and accomplish worship is very powerful and I strongly believe that worship is directly tied to miracles that's why I wonder sometimes you know in a, some some modern churches today we, we kind of cut worship short and I wonder if if that has any correlation with seeing less and less of supernatural miracles in 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 our midst because if I look going back to uh, Jericho when people begin to shout and give praise to God the walls were uh, uh, brought down and God gave victory when I look at David a man after God's own heart he was the greatest worshiper that we've seen in the Bible when I look at Solomon Solomon brought as a sacrifice of worship thousand uh, bull sacrifice and we see that the presence of God filled the temple so strongly that priests couldn't stand in the presence of God we look go forward in a New Testament we see that uh, a daughter uh, that a mother that had a daughter that was demon possessed was was trying and begging Jesus to help him and Jesus said I can't help you so the only thing that she could do the last thing that she could do is run in front of Jesus and bow and worship before him and Jesus could not step over worship even though it was not his resp responsibility and it was not his task to help that woman he clearly made that statement but he couldn't step over worship worship has a direct correlation to miracle because what happens in worship you begin to praise God and worship God ahead of time by faith you begin to worship God and exalt him for who he is before even he does anything in your life and God says you know what I can't pass a worshiper I gotta do something in our life let's uh, let me read to you a scripture from Isaiah chapter 6 and I'll give you just quick three points what what happens when we get into the wor worship and the atmosphere of worship 
Uh, and I'm going to read from Message Translation, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. In, in a year that uh, King Uzziah died, I saw a master sitting on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Angel, angel seraph hovered, ab uh, seraphs hovered above him, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their face. With two, uh, they covered their uh, feet. With two wings, they flew. And they called back and forth to one another. Holy, holy, holy is God of angel armies. His bright glory fills the whole earth. The foundations trembled and the sound of the in, at the sound of the angel's voice. And then the whole house was filled with smoke. And I said, doom, it is doomsday. I am good as dead. Every word I have ever spoken is tainted, blasphemous even. And the people I live with talk the same way, using words that are corrupt and disgrace. And, and here I've looked God in, in the face, the king, God of angel armies. Then one of the angels flew to me. He held a live coal that he had taken with the tons from the altar. He touched my mouth with the coal and said, look, the coal has touched your lips. Gone, your guilt, your sin wiped out. And then I heard the voice of the master. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I spoke up. I, I'll go, send me. Isaiah finds himself in the atmosphere of worship. He finds himself at the throne of God in God's presence. I want you to see what's, what's going on around God's presence is worship. That serves as a clue that if we want God's presence to be in our lives, if we want God's presence, God's anointing to be in our midst, in our services, we got to create an atmosphere of worship. First thing that worship does, worship makes you look upward. He says, I saw him on the throne worship takes your eyes off of where you're at of who you are what you've done or left undone and it puts your eyes on the king of kings lord of lords you begin to see god in his beauty you can begin to see god in his greatness you begin to see god for who he is worship helps you to shift your focus and put your focus in the right place it's like what worship does it it elevates you from where you're in it makes God look big and everything else looks small. It's, it's like when you get into the airplane and when you begin to take off and you begin to see buildings, people, cars and everything has become smaller, smaller and smaller. It's not that they've actually changed size. It's not that they actually became smaller. It's that your perspective has changed. What happens when you get into God's presence, your perspective begins to change. You begin to see God for who He is and you begin to see the problems for, who, for, for what they are. You begin to see God great. You begin to see God on the throne, all powerful, almighty. And you begin to see everything else is small, everything else possible. Everything else is achievable because who, he, who are in Christ, all things, all, everything is possible to them. Um, when you worship God, everything else, you'll be able to overcome all other things in your life. You'll be able to overcome hard things in your life. Because when you are going through hardship in your life, through a valley of shadow of death in your life, and, um, and the only thing is you see death and, and shadows around you. The only thing that you see is, is misery and mess. You can drown in it. But when you see God, when you worship it elevates you you know in my life I when I look back through all the difficulties in my life that I've gone through and challenges I, I look back and I see that it was through worship that I found my way out it's through worship that where I found my strength <laughs> I show you the funny story but it wasn't funny to me at that time and Rodney can attest to it uh, <laughs> when um when I was about, I, I don't know, I want to say about 16, 17, and I was pursuing, which now is my wife, Mariana, but at that time she wasn't my wife. Uh, I wanted her to be my wife, but we were in high school, and so she just came to church, and we kind of, I showed my interest uh, uh, in her, and uh, she sort of showed it one time, her interest, but then the other time not, and then it was all confusing and kind of weird and so, and, but nonetheless, I was pursuing her, and so there was came a time for, um, for homecoming, and <laughs> what happened was 
Uh, I wanted to ask her for, to go to homecoming, but I, I was just like, I didn't, I didn't feel like, yeah. Anyways, I didn't ask her to go to homecoming. So <laughs> I missed my opportunity. And uh, somebody from high school, uh, her friend, asked her to go home, to homecoming. So this was like, I can't believe she said yes to him. And it was like a stab in my heart. And I was crying before God. I thought the world was over. You know, teenage stuff. It's, uh, I thought, that's it. You know, it's, it's done. It's over. And, you know, one, one thing I always, you know, while other people would, uh, you know, when they face difficult situations in their life, they would run to the bottle. They would run to different things. They would run to sometimes even things like food and, and sleeping and, and depression. In my life, with those difficult situations, I always ran to God. Even though the situation is funny, but in my life, that's how I overcame each obstacle and each, uh, in, I poured out my heart. So I remember, uh, you know, I came uh, while she went to homecoming. I came here. It was like right here. I had my piano. I was sitting, crying, bawling my eyes out. Vladimir sneaked in. He's like, dude, what's going on? And so um, here's make the things, the story even funnier or worse for me at that time. She comes to church with her date, say, hey, I just want to say hello. And I'm here like bawling my eyes out before Jesus, <laughs> pouring my heart out because of this situation. Uh, those of you that have been in those days, you know, you know what I'm talking about. But, the, you know, as funny as the story is, but from the young age, I've, I've learned to run to God. And in the midst of even storms, in the midst of hardship, to worship God. And to process things with him and the way you process with him is God elevates you says you know what that problem is actually not that big I'm bigger you know that things that you're facing with what the valley that you're going through I have a mountain where I'm taking you don't worry about it it's gonna pass don't worry everything's gonna be good it shifts your focus from your problem it shifts your focus looking at at the current situation where you're in to look to God to look to where he's taking you David says that I look unto the hills where my help comes from. Looking into the presence of God. Well, being in the presence of God. So worship quick, quickly makes you look upward. Second thing from the scripture that we see, worship helps you look inward. We see that he says, in other, in other uh, translation, he says, woe to me. When you get into the presence of God, you begin to realize that how unworthy you are. You begin to realize that if it, was not, if it wouldn't be for God, you're no better than those people that maybe already passed away, that died, that overdosed on drugs. You begin to understand it's because of God's grace and because of His overwhelming love for you that you're here today where you're at. When you get into an atmosphere of worship, you begin to see how worthy He is and how unworthy you are. You begin to appreciate God more. You begin to exalt Him and understand that your life really depends on Him. You begin to position yourself in the right place. First thing is you begin to see God in the right place as God, as the Almighty. And secondly, you position yourself in the right place as in a place of dependence on Him. In a place of um, being longing for Him, depending on Him and desiring Him. In a place where God can actually begin to move in your life. And the third thing, worship empowers you to go forward he says after being in the presence of God after being in that worship atmosphere he says um, here I am send me he says here I am send me when you get into the presence of God when God's anointing flows when his presence is there you live empowered you live in charge you say God I'm gonna go and do what you called me to do I'm gonna go and tackle on the problem that I'm supposed to tackle on. I'm gonna go and take on that uh, that project that you, uh, you you called me to take on. In the presence of God when His power comes, when His anointing comes, this is where you receive freedom. This you become free from anxieties and worries. This is where you become empowered to run your race. Apostle Paul says that I put away every weight that easily ensnares me so I can run the race. In the presence of God, in, during worship, this is where you can begin to unload things that are slowing you down. And you begin to be empowered to move forward to reach the destiny that God has for you. You know, during worship, we've seen in our church where people receive freedom and deliverance. When the atmosphere, 
when everybody pitches in when everybody comes uh, comes with this attitude of, of hunger of seeking God and his anointing comes we begin to see how demons begin to manifest because demons can't stand in the presence of worship you know why because Satan himself and demons they did not want to give God worship in the first place and that's why they were throwing down so Satan hates worship. He can't stand when we come. And so if there is anything in us or any of the people that come that has have, ha, have the demonic influence over their life, they can't stand worship because that reminds them where they used to be and now they're not. We've seen people heal during worship. We see people free, people leaving their burdens, leaving their anxieties, everything that uh, they that would hold them down. David says, I was happy when they told me to go in the presence of, to, to in the house of God because he knew the value of worship. He knew that, you know, whatever I have going on, if only I can get into his presence, all, the, all these things, they will take a back seat. All these things. In God's presence, actually, this is where I can be changed. No, you can't change what you're worrying about. But when you get into God's presence, you let it go. When you get empowered by Him, this is where you can actually go out and make the difference and make the change. So I challenge you, church. I encourage you. We're going to talk more about it. And we're going to discover more the, 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 the true value of worship and what it really means to, uh, uh, to worship God. But I challenge you every time that we get together and right now as we go up front uh, and, and, and uh, the worship team is going to lead us into worship. I challenge you, abandon yourself with God begin to worship him for who he is begin to forget about the things that's bothering you or maybe the fact that you know it's a it's already time and you're getting tired but worshiping God for who he is and every time we get together I I promise you one thing you're gonna begin to see something new in our, in your life you're gonna begin to uh, see how God's anointing will begin to come more and more in our church we're gonna begin to see where demons will begin to manifest and be, be exposed and expelled in God's presence where where we'll begin to see healings happen even before we begin to pray for healings there's the reason why all the known and big men of God that God uses go from um, Benny Hinn and, and generals of God you, you talk about Apostle, uh, Apostle uh, Vladimir Matan in Ukraine you talk about Shep, Prophet Shepard Bushir is going to be here uh, and all other ministers that, that, that God uses they use worship as a catalyst for the miracles but everyone has to come in. It's not just the worship team. You have to come with it, with an, with a hunger, and with an attitude of adoration before God. And when you do that, miracles will begin to happen. God's anointing will begin to touch. Yokes will be broken. And God's going to begin to do great and mighty thing for you and people around you, because worship is contagious. Amen. Did you receive something this uh, this evening?